We have a customer that uh, with a Chevy Silverado, and Chevy Silverados typically have uh, uh, you know some typical problems. One of those typical problems is that the gas gauge stops working, and this one has that problem. Well, this customer had a no-start about a year ago, and uh, after replacement of the fuel sending unit, which I'm going to show you here, this, this isn't the Chevy one, this is one from a Subaru, uh, but you'll see that it includes the pump, uh, and it also includes the level sensor. So this is a rheostat right here, and this is almost exactly the same as what's inside of the Chevy tank. So since that's been replaced on this truck, uh, we can use the scan tool to test the components on the dash. Now some of them, you, know, you might just hear the motor in the back move a little bit. They don't specify, well, how far can we move the needle? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to use the scan tool on a known good gauge, and then I use the scan tool on the one that is the one that we're questioning. So that way we can, of course, cut our diagnostic time uh, into a smaller portion. So uh, right now I've got it, uh, the scan tool uh, focused on the uh, engine coolant temperature. It's okay that we're not looking at anything in here because what I want you to see is that we can go up and down. So if we focus on the dash, right, here's the one that I want to move. There's the one that I'm going to check, but I want to make sure, can we actually talk to the IPC? So I'm going to operate that one. So if you focus on that one, I'm going to press up. You notice that the gauge went up which means that the scan tool can talk to the IPC. And if I put it down via the scan tool, it goes down. Okay, so uh, we're gonna exit here, focus on the scan tool, and you'll see that um, we got instrument panel. Um, and so therefore what I wanna do is I'm gonna go to the uh, fuel level, and we're gonna tell the uh, fuel level gauge to work. Now um, I'm gonna press, it got up and down, I'm gonna press up, and I don't even hear anything, which is a telltale sign it's probably broken. The other thing too, a uh, note when it's broken, is that if you could see the needle, it's way below E. Typically these will sit like right around E, even when the uh, tank is empty, not all the way down here. So another telltale sign uh, that this instrument panel is starting to go is if you look at the uh, gear selector display, you'll notice that it is dark over in this area, it's a little bit lighter, but the whole area is supposed to be lighter. So what's happening is this area here, the light is going out, well, it might share some of this. When these displays go, typically what will happen is it'll, it'll uh, fail in one spot and then radiate out from there. So it could be that the next portion to fail might be our display here, or it could be our display up here, um, but it, it will fail. The fix for this is to pull this panel off. There's four seven millimeter uh, fasteners that hold this in, and then there's a connection in the back right around here on the top. Um, and uh, you'll have to write down what the mileage is. So we got 2,000 or uh, 200,000, 14, 399 uh, with the mileage. And then you, unfortunately, you have to take this to a Chevy dealer, with this being a Chevy, and then you do an exchange. The exchange isn't right away, because what this parts carnal will do We'll put this mileage into the new instrument panel. I have so seen sometimes where sometimes people cheat, find one of these in the junkyard, and put another one in there, but then of course the mileage is wrong. Uh, I know many of you are probably thinking, well, let's put one in that has a, a smaller mileage. The problem with that, though, is that when you go in New York State to get it inspected, you can't have mileage go backwards, so they'll know that something's wrong. So this is how you would diagnose uh, a gauge problem on a Chevy.